If you were to Google the name Grant Adcox, this is what you would find. Like most people you Google, the first thing you will get is his Wikipedia, but the search is noticeably dominated by the videos and photos of his terrible fatal crash that occurred in Atlanta in 1989. Probably most people only know Grant Adcox from his death. Most people probably have never even heard the name Grant Adcox, even if you're a diehard racing fan. But there is much more to this man and his career in racing than that crash. Much more. Driving for his father, Herb, with whom he owned a car dealership, Adcox gained most of his racing fame in ARCA. He was king of the super speedways with eight victories, including five at Talladega and two at Atlanta. He had planned to continue his career, which began in 1968 in the NASCAR Grand National Division. Grant Adcox was 39. Born on January 2, 1950 in the town of Chattanooga, Tennessee, Herbert Grant Adcox Jr. was the son of local Chevrolet dealership owner Herb Adcox. Herb had dabbled on and off with racing through most of his life, entering a car into a cup race at Atlanta in 1961, but never took racing too serious. However, when his son began getting into racing, Herb decided to become much more invested in it. Although their family business made them some decent money, they still didn't have the funds to be very competitive in the Cup Series. Herb and his son Grant first attempted the 1974 Daytona 500, qualifying 43rd out of the 60 plus drivers that attempted the race. Adcox failed to race his way in through his qualifying race and DNQ'd his first attempt at a Daytona 500. The next race Adcox would attempt would be the fourth race of the season at the recently resurfaced Rockingham Speedway. There, Adcox started 25th and ran the entire race, finishing 42 laps down in 18th. Ironically enough, in that same race Adcox made his first career start in, Richard Petty, the eventual race winner, made his 628th career start. Why is that significant? At the time, that broke the all-time starts record held by Buck Baker, who had held that record since 1962. Petty still holds this record to this day, with around 1,184 starts. Back to Adcox. He started another race at Atlanta later that year, before attempting another race at Talladega. Adcox started the Talladega race 28th and ran well through most of the day. However, coming on the pit lane during a pit stop, Adcox lost control of his car, causing him to spin down the pit lane and crash into current race leader, Gary Bettenhausen. Many members of Bettenhausen's pit crew were injured, including catch can man Don Miller, who was crushed between the two vehicles. One of the people that came to help the injured crew members was legendary crew chief Buddy Parrott. With the help of Parrott and the rest of the other crew surrounding the incident, they were able to get the injured crewman aid and take Miller to the hospital. Once at the hospital, they had to amputate Miller's left leg due to injuries. Adcox's car wasn't badly damaged from the incident and could have continued in the race, but the team had to park the car instead. Due to Adcox being sent into extreme shock from the event and not being able to move, nonetheless race, the rest of the 500 mile event. The team didn't attempt another race for nearly six months after this, and the next time Grant Adcox hit the track was the Fall Charlotte race the same year, where he came home 18th out early due to an engine. Adcox and his team came back for the 1975 season, this time qualifying for the Daytona 500. He still, however, wasn't able to compete in NASCAR's biggest race as he was taken out early in a large crash on lap number three. Adcox again ran a race at Atlanta before heading to Talladega for the first time since the horrific incident. There, Adcox got his first career top 10. Over the summer, Adcox ran a few more races before returning to Dega again in August. This weekend, 
the 1975 August Talladega weekend is considered by many one of the darkest weekends in NASCAR and maybe even motorsports history. This awesome facility, built where cotton once grew, stands out in this sparsely populated area like a pyramid in the desert, a monument to the man who built it, Bill France. A 2.6 mile trioval capable of testing the ultimate limits of man and motor vehicle. The five story tall 33 degree bank turns allow a car to hurdle into new frontiers, bridled only by the courage of the driver in control. A 4,000 foot backstretch where speed and courage becomes a colorful collage at 200 miles per hour. There is no backing off, no compromising, no easy way, no speed limit. The weekend starts with another tragedy for Adcox. Adcox's team was primarily made up of part-time employees that would volunteer to help the team. Cotton Lovell was one of those people, a former mechanic who stepped away from his full-time role in NASCAR when it, the previous owner he, had, he was working for, Friday Hassler, was killed in a crash at Daytona three years prior. Lovell decided to take racing as more of a part-time basis in his life. However, he was still very happy with helping Adcox and his team on a part-time basis and decided to make the trip with them to Talladega. Similar to last year, the Dega weekend quickly took a dark turn. As in the garage during practice, Lovell collapsed while working on the car. After being transported to the hospital, Lovell was pronounced dead from a heart attack. Herb Adcox immediately withdrew the car from the event out of respect for Lovell, and Grant was able to find another ride with car owner Tom Williams. With the team being withdrew, that allowed 1963 Daytona 500 winner Tiny Lund to race in the field of 50 cars. Lund had raced in a lower series event there earlier in the week and had won the event that he was in. Therefore, that put him in a position for if someone were to fall out of the race and not be able to start it, he could be in on a provisional. After the Adcox Lovell situation, Tiny Lund filled the spot of Herb Adcox's car. The race went green and on lap seven of the event, Tiny Lund was involved in a huge accident on the back stretch, taking out multiple drivers. During the accident, Lund's car exploded into a fireball as spectators ran onto the track to pull the unresponsive Lund from his car. There, fans and track workers were able to resuscitate him for a short while before officially being pronounced dead at the track hospital. Adcox made it through the crash and continued racing until his engine went go on lap 101 of the event. The tragedies weren't over. During the same weekend in August, Mark Donahue was involved in a serious crash during the weekend for the Australian Grand Prix. Donahue wasn't significantly injured from the crash at first, but later died from serious head injuries at a local hospital. Weirdly enough, just days prior to this crash, he was at Talladega, setting speed records before the weekend in Austria. As the 1975 season wore on, Adcox put together some decent runs after Talladega, with a string of three top 20s in his next three starts, and ended running 25th at Bristol. Up through 1979, Adcox ran part-time in the Cup Series, collecting his best finish of fifth at Talladega. Through this time, Grant showed off his impressive high-speed racing skills at the track that gave him his only top five, building a reputation of being a great super speedway driver. After four tedious years in the 1979 season, Adcox stepped away from racing and didn't step foot in a race car again until 1983. Adcox decided to make a one-off start in the Talladega 500 once again with his father's team, but sadly was taken out in a large crash on lap two when Neil Bonnet blew an engine and dumped oil all over the track. With oil on the track, it caused an enormous crash, taking out multiple drivers early and ending Grant's day. Adcox waited until the very same race the next season to race again. Adcox completed only a lap this time before blowing a motor and not being able to even complete more than two laps in two consecutive seasons. In 1985, Adcox decided to try something different, ARCA. At age 35, Adcox ran three races in the 1985 ARCA season, finishing top 10 in all of them. Adcox was still making occasional cup starts, but his concentration now was in ARCA. In 1986, Adcox ran eight races, 
And there, he finally did it. Dominating the race, Adcox finally claimed victory at Daytona. The year got even sweeter with three more wins, with two at Talladega and one at Atlanta. With winning half of the starts he made in 1986, they committed to the full 1987 season. Grant and his dad, Herb, ran fairly competitive in the next two full-time seasons, winning four more races during that time and finishing fourth and third in driver points. They started looking into getting back into the Cup Series for the 1989 season. Adcox may start at Talladega, Daytona, and finish 24th and 13th place, while also running about half the ARCA schedule, claiming another victory at Flat Rock Speedway. Herb and Grant headed to the season finale weekend at Atlanta Motor Speedway to run both the ARCA and Cup races at the track. They're watching yeah, trouble down here. Turn one and two. We have a car on fire after having hit the wall in turn number one. Red 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 Adcox. Adcox. Car at the bottom of the racetrack. Still a little bit of fire seen from underneath the car. On lap 203 of the 500 mile race, Adcox's car veered hard right while racing Jim Sauter and slammed into the outside wall. Safety crews got there and realized how bad the accident was immediately cut the roof off the car. They extracted Adcox from the car, and once the crash was cleaned up, they quickly resumed the race. In about an hour, they awarded the cup title to Rusty Wallace for the 1989 season. And around that time, Grant Adcox was transported to the hospital, where they declared him dead on arrival. After an investigation, it was found that Adcox's seat had broken from the mounts in the car when it made contact with the wall, turning its seat from the original position to now facing the passenger side of the car. The impact of the hit also moved the entire rear end housing an, an entire foot and a half to the right side. The cause of the crash, according to most spectators, was a blown tire, which appears to be the case when watching the video. That story holds true when Adcox's spotter and Jim Sauter who both say they saw the tire go down and the car go straight. However, Goodyear representatives stated that the crash was not caused by a tire failure, but instead caused by mechanical failure. There still is quite a bit of controversy around what really caused the crash that day. Shortly after his death, ARCA renamed their yearly sportsmanship award to the H.G. Adcox Award, which was handed out each year to the ARCA driver who exhibited the best sportsmanship. Grant's father, Herb Adcox, would present the award every year during the ARCA banquet until his death in 2015. I didn't really know how to end this video, so instead of trying to find the words to recap Grant Adcox's impact on the sport, here's Dale Earnhardt talking about Adcox. Hi, right, so. Rowan? Yep. Tell me a little bit about Grant Adcox as a driver. Well, I've raced with Grant Adcox a few times in, in my career, and uh, each time I've raced with him, he's been very competitive, uh, smart driver. I think he, uh, you know, makes good moves on the racetrack. He doesn't do anything uh, crazy. He's real competitive and uh, a good racer. And you know how difficult it is to race basically without a lot of dollars, which is what they've been doing this last number of years. Well, he's been real competitive for the amount of sponsorship he's had in the last couple of years. You know, he's won quite a few ARCA races at Daytona and Talladega and Atlanta round, and been very competitive. It's been amazed what they can do with just a minimum amount of dollars. If Grant had the right uh, backing, I'm sure he could be right up there with the rest of the guys. And you know what a driver can do for a sponsor. You've seen what you've done and what others have done. Well, that's true. Uh, the, the driver's got a lot of talent. Uh, Grant's got a lot of talent, and with the right backing, uh, he can, uh, you know, make a good showing for the right sponsors. And uh, you know, he's uh, he's real good with the press and everything. I've done a few press things with him, and uh, he's a real good promoter for the uh, sponsors and the tracks that he does for. So, you know, Grant can do do wonders for the right sponsor. That'll do it. Blah 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 blah. That was very quick and to the point. I appreciate it. And I'm sure Herb and Grant appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you, Dad. Right. Thanks, Eli. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Good luck.